Rick had always envisioned himself as a family man, someone who built his identity around his wife, Megan, and their two daughters, Lily and Ava. They lived in Chicago's historic Gold Coast neighborhood, a place of quiet elegance and old-world charm. For 18 years, Rick and Megan had woven a life together that seemed, on the surface, idyllic. Rick's career as an architect kept him busy designing projects that shaped the city skyline, while Megan, a respected community college professor, had a passion for teaching that Rick deeply admired. Recently, she had started spending more evenings at work, taking on what she called additional commitments to her students. He admired her dedication, though he had begun to sense a shift. Their conversations felt different, their connections strained. She seemed distracted, distant even. But Rick convinced himself it was merely stress from work or the demands of raising two teenage daughters. Everything changed during what was supposed to be a routine doctor's visit at the Westside Health Clinic. Rick almost left the clinic without a second thought, expecting the usual clean bill of health. But the doctor returned, his expression serious. I'm afraid we found traces of chlamydia, he said gently, as though delivering news Rick should have already expected. The words felt like a punch to the gut. Rick sat in stunned silence, his mind racing. There had to be a mistake. He argued, demanded explanations. Certain the results were wrong. But the cold, hard reality sank in. Megan was the only possible source. On the drive home, every moment he had trusted her replayed in his mind, each memory now tainted with doubt and disbelief. The betrayal gnawed at him, a corrosive weight growing heavier with every mile. Unable to face the truth alone, Rick drove to his parents' house in Evanston. His father, Henry, a retired Marine, was a man who faced every challenge with unflinching resolve. When he opened the door, his eyes immediately read the turmoil on Rick's face. Ellen, Rick's mother, a compassionate woman with an unbreakable spirit, instinctively sensed something was wrong. Over steaming cups of coffee at their kitchen table, Rick shared the devastating revelation. His voice trembled as he recounted the doctor's diagnosis, the shock, the betrayal. Henry listened in stoic silence, his presence a pillar of strength. Ellen's eyes, full of empathy, never left Rick's face. When he finished, Henry's voice was steady but firm. You're stronger than this, he said. Protect your daughters. Don't let her mistakes define you. The words resonated. A lifeline Rick clung to as he prepared to confront the woman he had loved for nearly two decades. That night, Rick waited for Megan to come home. She walked through the door with her usual excuse. Another late meeting with students. But this time, Rick didn't let it slide. He mentioned the diagnosis, watching her closely. Her face turned pale, her eyes widening in shock. At first, she denied everything, her voice shaking as she insisted there had to be a mistake. But Rick pressed on, demanding the truth, his voice a mixture of anger and heartbreak. Finally, she broke down, the facade crumbling. She confessed to an affair that had been ongoing for over a year. Each word was a knife twisting deeper into Rick's heart. He struggled to control his fury, conscious of their daughters sleeping down the hall. In the days that followed, the atmosphere in their home turned tense and cold. Megan seemed to expect forgiveness, but Rick couldn't offer it. He was determined to protect Lily and Ava from the fallout, to shield them from the cracks forming in their one stable world. Seeking guidance, he contacted Lauren Bishop, a sharp, compassionate attorney. She listened intently as he recounted the betrayal and recommended a DNA test. The suggestion felt like a gut punch, but Rick knew it was necessary. He needed to be certain, for the sake of his daughters and his own sanity. The week-long wait for the test results felt endless. When the envelope finally arrived, Rick's hands trembled as he opened it. Relief washed over him. The girls were his. The confirmation didn't erase the pain, but it strengthened his resolve. His daughters were his anchor, and he would protect them at any cost. With a clearer mind, Rick began to notice the signs he had missed. The late nights, the unexplained absences, the distant look in Megan's eyes. 
He reached out to Lauren again, determined to uncover the full extent of her betrayal. She hired a private investigator, and soon Rick was handed a folder filled with damning evidence. Photographs of Megan with her lover. Text messages filled with deception. Even witness accounts. This wasn't a single mistake. It was a calculated, ongoing double life. One evening, Rick sat alone in his study, listening to a recording the investigator had captured. A conversation between Megan and her lover. He heard her laugh, mocking his loyalty, joking about how easy it had been to keep him in the dark. Each word felt like a fresh wound, the betrayal cutting deeper than he thought possible. The memories of their life together, once cherished, now felt like a cruel joke. As if fate wasn't done testing him, the phone rang the next day. It was Mount Sinai Hospital. Megan had been in a car accident. The nurse's voice was calm but somber, and Rick's world Rick shifted stood yet frozen again. at Megan's bedside, struggling to reconcile the pain of the moment with his own conflicting emotions. She had been in a coma for several days after a severe accident, and the reality of her condition weighed heavily on him. Her injuries were extensive, and while the doctors did their best to provide some hope, Rick couldn't fully grasp the extent of her suffering. He couldn't deny the numbness he felt, a part of him still unsure if it was a defense mechanism or something deeper. He should have felt more, but instead, the overwhelming sensation was one of relief. It was something he hadn't expected to feel, but it lingered in the background, quietly numbing the anguish he thought he should have had. It shocked him how quickly he was able to disconnect emotionally, especially after everything that had happened. Looking at her lying motionless in the bed, Rick saw a woman he barely recognized. Megan looked fragile. The once strong and confident woman now rendered weak by the machines that beeped and hummed around her. The person in front of him was a stark contrast to the one who had betrayed him so completely. He remembered how she had hidden so much from him, including the affair that had torn their marriage apart. All the lies, the secrets she had kept for so long, suddenly seemed so distant, so irrelevant. As he stared at her, the remnants of the love he had once felt for her began to fade, as if it had never truly existed in the first place. The feeling was like an echo, barely there, lost in the hollow space of his heart. The hospital room felt suffocating as Rick took a slow breath and reached into his coat pocket, pulling out an envelope. Inside it were all the pieces of evidence he had gathered, texts, photos, and letters, proof of the affair Megan had tried so desperately to hide from him. Alongside the envelope, he placed his wedding ring. It felt cold in his hand, a symbol of a union that was now nothing more than a broken promise. The weight of it in his palm was almost unbearable. He carefully set both the envelope and the ring on the small table next to her bed, his hands trembling slightly. With one last, bitter glance at the woman who had once been his everything, Rick whispered, This is goodbye, Megan. It wasn't a declaration, but a quiet farewell. Then, without looking back, he turned and walked out of the room, knowing deep down that his marriage was over, beyond repair. Three weeks passed before Megan finally woke up from the coma. By then, Rick had already taken the first steps toward his new life. He had moved his daughters to his parents' house, giving them a safe space to be surrounded by love and stability while he navigated the emotional turmoil. The house, full of the warmth and support of his parents, provided a refuge from the wreckage of his own life. Despite the upheaval, Rick knew he had to focus on rebuilding, even if it felt impossible. One evening, as they sat together watching a movie in the living room, Lily, his youngest daughter, broke the silence with the question Rick had been dreading. Dad, are you and Mom going to get a divorce? Her voice trembled with uncertainty, and Rick could see the worry in her eyes. For a moment, he hesitated, the truth weighing heavily on his heart. He had never wanted his daughters to feel the pain of their family's breakdown, but there was no way around it. He met her gaze, trying to reassure her even though he felt anything but certain. Yes, sweetheart, he said softly, his voice steady despite the flood of emotions that rose within him. We are, but I want you to understand that none of this is your fault. I love you both more than anything in this world, and nothing will change that. 
The divorce proceedings began shortly after, and Rick steeled himself for the confrontation that would inevitably come when Megan was well enough to meet. When that day arrived, he found himself in front of her once again, but this time in the new apartment she had moved into in Lincoln Square. The apartment was a blank slate, a reflection of her attempt to start over, and yet it felt cold, detached, just like the woman sitting across from him. She looked at him with an expression that was part guilt, part desperation. Megan tried to explain herself, to plead for another chance, but Rick couldn't bring himself to listen any more. His heart had hardened in the weeks since the affair was revealed, and the pain he had endured had transformed into something unrecognizable, an indifference that made her words feel hollow. I've secured full custody of the girls, Rick told her flatly. And here are the divorce papers. I'm not going back, Megan. The finality of his words hung in the air, an unspoken truth that neither of them could deny. The assets were divided and Megan was left to face the consequences of her choices, her future now uncertain. Rick didn't feel satisfaction, nor did he feel angry. He simply felt done. In the months that followed, Rick threw himself into the challenge of rebuilding his family. Life as a single father was harder than he had ever imagined, but it also brought a sense of purpose he hadn't realized he was missing. He focused on his daughters, determined to give them a sense of stability, to show them that despite everything, they would be okay. He threw himself into work, and at the end of each day, he made sure that his daughters knew how much they were loved. Family dinners became a ritual, a way to reconnect and find comfort in each other's company. His parents, with their steady support, helped him navigate the emotional challenges, offering guidance and reassurance when he felt overwhelmed. Slowly, his daughters began to open up, they expressed their hurt, their confusion, their disappointment. But even amidst the pain, there was a glimmer of hope. Together, they began to forge a new normal, one built on the love and support of their family. It wasn't easy, but they were learning to adjust, to heal. Then, one evening, Rick received some good news that brought a sense of relief. His recent medical tests had all come back negative, clearing him of any lingering health concerns that had been a source of constant anxiety. That weight, the one that had hung over him since his own health had been in question, finally lifted. He could breathe again, knowing that he was free from the fear of what might be lurking in his body. Standing on his balcony, looking out over the vast expanse of the Chicago skyline, Rick felt a sense of peace wash over him. It was unfamiliar, this quiet contentment, but it was real. The road ahead would not be easy, he knew that. But for the first time in months, he felt ready to face whatever came next. He had come through the hardest part, stronger than he had ever imagined, and with his daughters by his side, he knew they could overcome anything. The future was uncertain, but it was theirs to shape.